the Headwaters Resource Conservation and Development Council presents the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. In partnership with the United States Department of Agriculture, Natural Resources Conservation Service, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the Foundation for Pennsylvania Watersheds, the Pennsylvania Grazing Lands Coalition, Penn State College of Agricultural Sciences, Penn State Extension, the Potter County Conservation District, and by the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources Bureau of Forestry. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative Demonstration Farm Network in Potter County, Pennsylvania in the Genesee Watershed. I'm Amanda Murdoch with the Natural Resource Conservation Service out of Cowdersport, Pennsylvania. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative is a national initiative which will aid in the evaluation of the physical, chemical, biological, social, and economic impacts of agriculture on non-point source pollution within the Great Lakes Basin. Multiple states within the Great Lakes Basin are participating in this initiative, including Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, this initiative consists of three farms within the watershed, in which I'm standing next to the Genesee River right now. Um, the three farms that we're working with goal is to reduce non-point source pollution that will impact the Genesee River. Um, these farms include the Brent Bacon property, which is a forest landowner, the Michael Thompson property, which is a livestock producer, and the Dean Irway property, who is a cropland producer. This initiative is managed by the Headwaters RC&D Council with the Natural Resource Conservation Service. In cooperation with Penn State Extension, the Bureau of Forestry, and the Potter County Conservation District, as well as others. The goal is together to reduce non-point source pollution, particularly phosphorus, by implementing best management practices, innovative testing and techniques that will systematically reduce phosphorus runoff within the watershed. Stay tuned for educational videos from our partners that will showcase the great work that these landowners have been doing. Hi, I'm Jason Childs, District Manager at the Potter County Conservation District. Potter County is home to 3,131 miles of streams and rivers. It is also the location of the only triple divide or place where three major watersheds originate east of the Mississippi River. The Allegheny River, Pine Creek, or larger Chesapeake Bay, and Genesee River watersheds all originate in a farm field right here in Potter County. The GLRI Demonstration Farm Network Project is located within the Genesee Watershed, which encompasses approximately 9% of the county's landmass. The agricultural practices being implemented will help address the sediment and nutrient concerns along the east branch of the Genesee River specifically. Water quality impairments in the Genesee Watershed are largely attributed to agricultural activities and pathogens. Over the past several years, the Potter County Conservation District and partners have been conducting baseline water quality monitoring of surface water streams throughout the county. The location that we're currently standing at here on the middle branch of the Genesee River once had a data logger deployed right over here. These stream monitoring devices measure temperature, conductivity, and flow levels at a 15 minute interval, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days per year. Conductivity is the measure of the water's ability to pass electrical flow. Essentially, the more particles that are suspended in the water, usually in the form of sediment, the higher the conductivity. The goal was to establish a set of data to illustrate what the typical characteristics of a particular stream are. Within the GLRI Demonstration Farm Network Project area, several data loggers were installed on the east branch of the Genesee River and adjacent tributaries. This particular area within the watershed showed baseline data characteristics with higher conductivity readings on average compared with other streams within the Genesee watershed as a whole. During runoff events, the east branch of the Genesee River's conductivity was more than double what the middle branches would be. This illustrates the difference in land uses between the two tributaries. History of the farm begins, my dad uh, started renting it back in the late 30s. My grandfather purchased the original farm, I think in 1942. My grandparents, Henry and Dorothy Hamilton, um, their family actually 
purchased the farm in the 1950s. I have many, many fond memories growing up in the watershed. Brothers, and aunts and uncles, we'd go fishing and wading in the creek. Ever since I was a little kid, I remember going with my mom and dad back into the woods over the hill. There was a leak patch. And I've, I've dug quite a few leaks in my time. Building barns and helping put tin on roofs and getting the wrong nail every once in a while and then go and put mice on that. I would fish the Ludington branch and that's where I learned to fish all branches, all the tributaries of the Genesee. And that's the bottom line. We're trying to clean up the streams. We're trying to build soils, not deplete soils. There's more efficient ways of doing what I have been previously doing and excited to, to continue that process. Fencing behind us, we got uh, this uh, riparian area right here. And we have uh, stream bank fencing. I mean, the water is cleaner. Just visually, you can tell um, the cows don't have to go to the creek to get the water. I've been working conservation projects since uh, probably 2004 or five. We've been implementing the no-till part of it, uh, cover cropping. We've been taking temperature and uh, moisture of, of the soils throughout the winter and in, in the springtime. The heavy use feeding area is gonna let us keep cattle off grounds um, when there's mud and pugging. We had water sampling. Soil sampling, following the recommendations on that. We've done leaf sampling. The line that we put on and the equipment we are learning to use with the temporary fencing and the water system. Excited to see where that will take us. One of the biggest things that I've learned, especially with growing the corn, is when to apply the nitrogen to whatever else it's needed in there to get a good growing crop. Now we're, we're able to greatly intensify how much we can move and paddock sizes. I know I've planted uh, trees uh, along watersheds and riparian areas. This year by far was probably about the best best crop that we have had. All the representatives that uh, have involved, been involved with this project are, are absolutely a pleasure to work with. I, I've enjoyed it very much. They're there to help us. It made me feel like I could pick up the phone, call them anytime. There's always an answer. Take the information that I get back and apply it. Give them a call. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs>